Okay, gentlemen, thank you very much for having me. You're welcome. I have some important questions to you that I'm sure are very, very important to a lot of people who are curious about cognac. Because when you travel the world, uh, when you see how cognac is enjoyed and served in different places, you also see that there is a lot of differences in the way it's served. And also there is a little bit of myths around cognac, mm -hmm. uh, ranging from drinking it on ice and cocktail or, or not doing it at all, or even sometimes you can hear about almost boiling cognac over a candle and things like this. So mm -hmm. let's set the thing straight and let's tell, tell it how it is. What is the real and best mm -hmm. glass to drink cognac? Is it the big glass everybody thinks is for cognac or is it a small glass? We we used to prefer this uh, little uh, glasses. Uh -huh. with the tulip shape is uh, very important. Uh -huh. uh, so the big balloon is very nice glasses, but very not uh, efficient uh, for tasting uh -huh. because it, all the aroma are mixed. It's uh -huh. difficult to to see uh, what you can smell. With this kind of glass, you can determine which aroma uh -huh. you you get. It's not burning. It's a very good. Professional glasses, we work with that in the cellar, but mm -hmm. also for private person at home. So this is a glass you work in the cellar with for blending. Oui. And this is also a glass that you would recommend for drinking cognac as a person who enjoys cognac as an enthusiast. Exactly. And um, as, could you say maybe, is this just your personal opinion or is it for whole cognac region more or less? Because I, I was here a few days, I was in a few Maisons du Cognac and I didn't see balloon glasses anywhere. So are they used at all? Do you use them in cognac? Do you see them in cognac? No, we, we see them in, in restaurants. Sometimes they still continue to show it uh, mm -hmm. and sometimes they serve in it. But most of the time, uh, even the other houses, they work with these glasses. Mm -hmm. So tulip the, glass is the real yes, glass? Yes, yes. So actually this is interesting because uh, you could say that tulip glass is the right glass to taste probably all aged spirits. Yes, exactly. So whatever the spirit is, be it rum, whiskey, cognac, exactly. and Calvados, then this, yes. the, the tulip glass probably is, uh, mm -hmm. is the best. Wait. Okay, thanks for this. So as far as uh, we already established the glass, what is the way to use the glass? Mm -hmm. Maybe we can go from theory to practice, because yes, practice is always way. better. What is it that you're pouring right now? Uh, so you got this sim is uh, about 20, 20 years old. It's uh, a decanter. Mm -hmm. mm. So this is a 20 year old. So in fact, it's an XO. Yes. Or extra XO. Yes. Because it's three times older than it should be as an mm -hmm. XO right now. Mm -hmm. So the goal is not to, to taste spirits, like mm -hmm. to taste wine. Uh, mm -hmm. It's not very good to do that and, and smell you mm -hmm. because the alcohol can burn your mm -hmm. nose so I used to be nice with my glass just turn like that mm -hmm. and after I put it in this way mm -hmm. so your way to do it is to keep it like this mm. turn it in your hand then the, the, you the, the spirit is yeah. on the on the walls of the mm. glass you can observe the, the, uh -huh. the breeze you can legs. see it yes yeah. the legs mm. Mm -hmm. And then you smell it. Okay, this one is nice. It's floral. It's mm -hmm. fresh. You said it's twenty. It was twenty years old. Yes. Mm -hmm. And if you move your nose, you have different mm -hmm. category of uh, mm -hmm. of flavor. Okay. So if you move the nose around the glass, you feel different things mm. on this on this opening of the glass. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. When you want to break it, you mm -hmm. need to take just a little. Mm -hmm. Don't take as much as you do for wine because it's alcohol, it's aggressive. So just the first time, just to make your mouth ready. Mm -hmm. Then the second lamp to appreciate mm -hmm. it. So the first time, it, it should be a small sip to get my yeah, to prepare your ready and everything. And then, then only the second sip will tell me what I'm actually drinking. Yes, yes. exactly. Okay. Mm 
What is the ABV of this cognac? 41%. 41%. Yeah. Okay. And uh, we were discussing blending and composing different cognacs. And uh, I see that uh, in different offerings that you have, you choose to use different ABV. Sometimes you have 40%, sometimes 41, sometimes 42. How do you decide? What is what is the reason for you to say, okay, this one will be 42, not 40? It's uh, during the blending, we we can see at uh, what moment, uh, what, uh, what percent of alcohol uh, we have the most, uh, the, the, the most aromas. And mm -hmm. uh, we try at different percentage. The problem is uh, in a lot of country, we have a tax uh, with the level of the, uh, alcohol and uh, a large part of the cognac, uh, of commercial cognac are sold at uh, 40%. Mm -hmm. But uh, when it's possible, uh, I agree. For me, I like at 40, between 42 and 44. Mm -hmm. uh, we have more more aromas because it's more concentrated, mm -hmm. and uh, we, we detect more uh, more uh, really more aromas mm -hmm. without alcohol. The problem is mm -hmm. to obtain a good balance between the, the, the alcohol and the aggressive part of the alcohol mm -hmm. and, and the aromas. And uh, when I blend, I, I try to push the aromas at the maximum without the alcohol, uh, the aggressive alcohol. Mm -hmm. So if there is no aggressive alcohol that you feel by nose or, or tongue also, then it's better to have it a little bit higher by volume. 42, yes. 43, maybe yeah. 44. Yeah. Okay, so with uh, when you produce cognac not in large volumes, then you can decide, okay, it is a little bit more expensive because Okay, alcohol is one thing, but mm -hmm. then people pay excise tax in their countries, mm -hmm. and when it's 42, they pay a little bit more excise yes. tax, that's true. Uh, but then if the flavor is better, it should be okay. Mm -hmm. And so for big houses, they go usually 40, just to make it probably easier for business, and also cheaper for the excise, mm -hmm. to be cheaper on the shelf. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now I understand this. Are we ready for the second sip? I think we are. Mm -hmm. So you can feel it's much less. Aggressive. Yeah, now now it's much easier. It's sweet mm. right. and it's floral it's and it's fruity it. and it's chocolatey. And you can choose a long time mm -hmm. and you keep mm -hmm. uh, some complexity mm -hmm. and different aromas on the palette. And the finish stays around. Mm. Yes, nice. Mm -hmm. Okay, so there is another thing that's related to cognac and very often, especially in my country, in Poland, I hear about this very often. It's the... <clears throat> I'm sure you've heard about that also. It's the warming up with mm -hmm. hands. And a lot of people are convinced that if you don't warm up your cognac with hands, then it will not be good, you will not feel everything. What is your position on that? What do you think about this idea? When it's too cold, you miss some aroma. Mm -hmm. But when it's too hot, you receive the aggressivity of the alcohol. Mm -hmm. So it's not good when it's cold, but you you warm it too much, you, you can't appreciate it. It mm -hmm. will burn your nose and uh, and also your, your mouth. So the room uh, temperature is, uh, is fine. So possibly the only reasonable moment to warm your cognac with a hand is when you drink outside summer and it's very cold. Yes, exactly. Other than that, in the room temperature, something like this mm -hmm. should never occur. Oui. So this is something we it, don't do. It, it's important to understand when the, the, the temperature is higher, the alcohol evaporate in first. Uh -huh. And uh, if you put your nose on the glass... You, you feel burn, the ethanol first, you, the spirit. You catch the alcohol and not the aromas. Mm -hmm. And it's the same if you move quickly mm -hmm. uh, and you put on your mm -hmm. nose, you, have the, you catch the alcohol, you don't catch the mm -hmm. aromas. Mm -hmm. We, we have the habit to do that with wine, but mm -hmm. the wine is at 12%. Uh, this one then the alcohol some, doesn't count. It's wine. more at uh, 40%. Mm -hmm. percent. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, if I hear this, it's a logical conclusion that uh, I shouldn't even ask you, but I will ask you because people will probably want to know. Uh, 
Also, I show in my life, somewhere in gastronomy in some restaurants in France, but not only in France, that sometimes they serve not only cognacs, but also other brandies on some sort of special device that holds the glass like this, and it holds the glass over a candle, over open fire. Mm -hmm. So it's almost like boiling cognac. Have you ever seen something like this, maybe? Yes, I think it's very nice for the picture, but... Uh -huh. uh, not very nice to, to drink that. Uh -huh. uh, so, too hot. so this is maybe a cool trick to attract customers <coughs> or something, but... In the winter, when it's minus 10, you could appreciate this, uh -huh. but it's more the sensation in your oh, body. Oh, getting warm. Yes, yeah. I think this is good for that. Uh -huh. But in terms of analyze of aroma, it's uh -huh. not good. So for tasting, this is useless. This can be done for fun or to get warmed up, yes, but this is not... Exactly. So it's, it's more useful, like, but not to do... A, it's probably more like expensive après ski. Thing really? when you ski in the winter or, or taste cognac. Exactly. Okay. All right. So we know it's a tulip glass. We know it's room mm -hmm. temperature. We know it's no extra things added. It's just like this. And uh, this is an eggshell, which is a blend. Mm -hmm. I know you prepared something else. We can oui. also try. Uh, could you tell us a little bit about what is some other type of cognac we could possibly check? So this cognac is a uh, 1878. Uh, the particularity is uh, it has been aged in a uh, new cask only. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's the best way to understand what flavor, what mm -hmm. kind of flavor a new cask can, can give. Mm -hmm. So this yeah. is, if I may see, this is a very nice bottle. I mm -hmm. assume it's from your personal collection because mm -hmm. it has no commercial label. Mm -hmm. Very nice. It says Cognac Jean Filou, Grand Champagne, uh, 1978, Fut Neuf. So this is new cask and it's right now it's almost 40 years old, 30 oui. something years old. Okay, oh. and it's 44%. <clears throat> Sounds very interesting. Mm -hmm. I'm very eager to try it. So if it's uh, Funef, the new cask, I understand that it can be uh, a little bit more tannic or not tannic or... Yes, we, uh, in fact this cognac was aged in a new cask uh, just after the distillation and uh -huh. age in, in this uh, the same cask uh, during for more than for 40 years. Of course, today it's not a new cask. But yes, the, the, of course. You call it new cask because it has always been the same cask. Yeah. Uh -huh. So can could this cognac be called, I'm sorry for using a whiskey word, but could it be called single cask cognac, this With? one? Yes, but, uh, we. I know it's unusual to use in the same cask in the same new new, new cask during uh, more than forty years. Mm -hmm. But uh, with that, it's possible to create something special, special mm -hmm. quality single cask, or to sell in single cask, or for me to 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 use in a blend and to push. Uh, especially the, the, the vanilla, it's very mm -hmm. aromatic in vanilla, and to push the, the vanilla taste in a blend. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, we, we have in all different cellars some cask uh, aged in, uh, in the same cask mm -hmm. during a long time. Mm -hmm. I just had a little check with my nose, it's something really, mm -hmm. really nice. <clears throat> I feel much more mature uh, fruit here, a lot of dry fruit, some conflict maybe. The problem of the, of the new cask, mm -hmm. at the beginning when it, it's young, you have, it's wood, it's mm -hmm. only woody, mm -hmm. woody, woody. Mm -hmm. And it's necessary to wait a minimum 20 years <clears throat> to change the wooden taste in aromas, because mm -hmm. it's necessary mm -hmm. to to, to wait uh, the, the aging process mm -hmm. and uh, the tannin change in aromas. Okay, so you would say that first 20 years it's giving tannins and then the second 20 years it's more about what happens within the alcohol. alcohol we we within lose the adhesivity, adhesivity uh -huh. becomes complexity in uh -huh. aromas. And, uh, yeah. mm -hmm. Okay. We lose the wooden taste and we... Mm -hmm. And we lose alcohol also. And you lose alcohol, yes. 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 This aroma is really beautiful, mm -hmm. really nice. Yes, it's a, 
a little too much, but... Uh, oh, it's very rich. I don't know if too much. It's very, very rich. I like it, but... But I understand that someone could call this maybe more elegant because it's it's toned down a little bit, mm -hmm. a little bit. And this one is, it's very robust. Mm -hmm. It's very, oh, I want to drink it. And uh, you have a little bit of acidity. Mm -hmm. You have a lot of aromas. Mm -hmm. But you have a little bit of acidity on mm -hmm. the tongue because it's this Grand Champagne is young. Mm -hmm. It's possible to age uh, more. more. So you say this almost 40 year old cognac for Grand Champagne is young cognac? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay, yeah. that sounds very good. Uh, I also would like to refer to what you said before because I saw this one is uh, 44%. Uh, and uh, here this 44%, you feel it's a little stronger also. But this translates into intensity of flavor. I, I feel that the finish is very intense. It stays on my tongue. So the 44% is, uh, it makes it nice. So I think I understand why you chose to bottle it at 44 uh, and not at 40. Uh, this, this one is nice. Uh, do you think this kind of profile is uh, also a commercial profile or is it more um, meant for people who already understand cognac, have some experience and... Yes. We, yes. We... It's difficult to sell uh, to sell that like that. Uh, it's more mm -hmm. to explain. Uh, mm -hmm. It's more trending cognac and mm -hmm. also cognac for people who know cognac mm -hmm. already. Who can be surprised. Uh, so by so uh, Funef and cognac bottled at higher ABV and also from single cask. Is some, of course it's not easy to buy. Mm -hmm. You cannot go to shop, to shop and buy a cognac yeah. like this. But if you manage to buy it, you would recommend it to people who already have some experience, mm -hmm. who drank some VS, VS or PXL from different mm -hmm. houses, understand different styles and uh, things like this. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is, this is very it's, interesting. Because cognac, we, we don't sell that, but here it's possible, possible to, to taste it. Mm -hmm. And if somebody fall in love for this, we can do a special, uh, special booking, uh, special, booking. special label. And, uh, uh -huh. uh, yeah. Okay. That sounds very good. So I'm, I'm, I'm even more happy now that I was able to mm -hmm. uh, appreciate it. Mm, just one more question I'm wondering. As far as tasting is concerned, I'm not talking about blending, like, because very few people do it for professional reasons. But uh, let's say I'm a cognac enthusiast at home and I have a very, it, it would have to be a very, very good friend to, to give me all these bottles. But let's say, let's say I just got a present and I got six or ten bottles of mm -hmm. cognacs. How many glasses of cognac do you think I can drink for tasting to still enjoy the tasting experience, not the alcohol experience, not to get intoxicated by alcohol, mm -hmm. just to enjoy the flavor. Is there some reasonable amount that mm -hmm. should be tasted? Can you taste 20 glasses or can you taste 10 glasses or what is your opinion on this? Mm, I can easily taste 10 glasses. Uh, I think I still can uh, work and, good, and do good analysis between 20 and 30 glasses. Uh, over that, uh, you need to taste very often and mm -hmm. to be a real professional to, to mm -hmm. taste more and to still to do a good job. Mm -hmm. Okay. What do you think? And, mm -hmm. uh, by example, uh, at the, the Commission of the Quality in BNEC, we have one hour to taste 12 gla different glasses. Mm -hmm. Young, uh, a different age. Mm -hmm. We don't know what we, we have. We have uh, 12 glasses and uh, a white page. Yes, uh, and you have to write it on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, so uh, just to clarify something, because today I was with you and the sellers looking how you blend and looking at different things that you did work, and I saw that you also spit uh, when you taste. And uh, because for me, uh, I also have some experience in mm -hmm. tasting, and for me, 20 to 30 glasses. I don't call it a tasting, I call it a party. Really? It's already too much for me when I drink all of them. Mm -hmm. But when you say 20 to 30, do you, do you say through the whole day or for instance one, two hours? And do you spit or not? We always spit. You always, always spit. Especially in the blending cellar because mm -hmm. here we, we get cognac 40, 44 percent. But mm -hmm. when you work in the blending cellar or in the aging cellar, it can be uh, 50, 60, 65. 
So mm -hmm. there is no way to drink that. Uh, mm -hmm. We absolutely have to split uh, mm -hmm. everything with mm -hmm. over 60. Okay, so that's, uh, you call it Brut de Fu. Oui? Oui. That's uh, cask strength in English. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. So when you say 20 to 30, you mean with spitting. Of course, this goes through to the blood through mucosa, the alcohol, mm -hmm. so you cannot drink all day, mm. but it's a little bit easier. So maybe a reasonable amount would be 5 to 10 glasses, probably, is something that a normal adult man can handle mm -hmm. with drinking. Uh, because otherwise it's, uh, I think, 20 glasses. Uh, if you drink, I think five is enough. Five is yeah, enough, yeah, yeah. yes. Five mm -hmm. is mm -hmm. enough. Okay. And if you have this, I, I, I once heard, I know it's a cliche, but I, I once heard that uh, when you drink really good cognac, it's enough to smell it a little bit and start talking about it. Uh, and so, uh, then when you want to drink it, it's enough to smell it again. And I mm -hmm. think this is, uh, this is very nice gentleman conversation because we have just done it precisely. So I smelled it, I had a sip, it's beautiful, and now I smelled it one more time and I don't have to do anything else. Mm -hmm. I don't need another glass, I don't need another glass. Right. This one is enough for me to spend some time on it, think about it, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. enjoy it a lot. Gentlemen, thank you very, nice, very much for this nice conversation. It was very interesting information that you shared with us. I'm quite sure that a lot of people will be interested. Uh, and uh, let's enjoy the beautiful cognac and share this great moment. Mm -hmm. uh, Santa. Santi.